Hello. Thank you for coming back to Atlanta. We love you here. So I have been pondering this idea of designing a beautiful life. And I feel that as we manifest things more and more, it starts feeling that we're like molding this clay constantly. Could we ask a quick question? Yeah. Does it feel like you've designed it piece by piece and that the vortex has it? So does it feel already designed? In a way, yes. Specifically, as you live life and as you know wanted and unwanted, isn't that what that vortex is? Is a, a literal designing of a magnificent life. It is. It's mm. been designed. It's been designed by you. It's there. So when I look at my week ahead and I not specifically like trying to push it into a certain way of being, but more like I sent out an intent for how I want to feel. Like I want to wake up. I want to feel clear. I want to meditate. I want things to go really well. Here's the thing that we want to say to you, because we are with you on all of this and there isn't anything about it that we aren't in agreement with. And we are happy to discuss it with you to bring it into fuller clarification. Mm -hmm. We just want to say that when you accept that you've already been designing it, that you are continuing to, mm -hmm. to design it and that your vortex always includes all of that intentionality. So that part's already been done. But the thing that you're calling design or by design, the thing that you're doing is you're acknowledging a segment and you're identifying what you want to experience in the segment. You're not really doing the designing that's already done. What you're doing is the putting yourself in the receptive mode of the design that's already there. Mm -hmm. Can you feel the difference? Mm -hmm. Anything that you do, anytime that you are deliberately focusing in a way that feels good or looking for things that feel good that's just you putting yourself in vibrational alignment with that receptive mode so that the vortex can we started to say reveal itself to you but that's not the right way the vortex is always revealing itself to you so that you can be in the receptive mode of what the vortex is revealing to you yeah so is a distinction worth making it is because I feel that everything that comes to me is something that I have wanted consciously or unconsciously yeah. when it comes it feels really good and I love it when it comes but then I wonder is there a part of me that consciously should think about where I'm going or is it okay to just kind of be happy 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 it's working it's working everything is good we would spend as much time as we could just savoring where we are because once this gets rolling in mm -hmm. other words because your approach and it's all right it's a sort of human approach indicates this small understanding now let's put you in the receptive mode mm -hmm. and then let's supply your perspective a little bit as we're feeling you offering it so here I am in the receptive mode and without this that is coming 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 I'm in the receptive mode but I don't have that but I want it and I don't have that but I want it and I don't have that but I want it and we want you to feel that when you're really in the receptive mode mm -hmm. that you've got it and 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 what you've got is this unfolding journey this fantastic unfolding journey that doesn't include the absence of what is wanted that's where we started this morning and so as you are in these advanced stages of really being this deliberate creator we just want you to feel the excellence and the satisfaction of being so happy where you are in utter knowledge and anticipation of it just being happy and happy and happy because there's something that gets a little screwy in that I'm at work and then I'll have a great weekend or I'm at work and then I'm going to go on a cruise or I'm at work and then because there's lack in where I am in the anticipation of something that's better coming there it is that's it there's, there's lack in the moment that you are anticipating it getting better yeah even to the moment it in itself is perfect there is nothing that I would say like right now I lack XYZ it's not like that you could solve that mm -hmm. slight distortion by saying things like I'm taking pleasure in this moment of anticipating the never-ending delicious unfolding of my life experience mm -hmm. I'm taking pleasure in this moment as I anticipate these other things that are on the way rather than and you're not really doing that but it's iffy other than life is going to get better than it is now with these things coming so I'm using my powerful now 
in anticipation of wonderful things and therefore there's no lack in my wonderful now as I'm anticipating those wonderful things now that's almost what you said but not quite that's divine design so what is this feeling then of the stuckness it's because your inner being never feels the need for something to change to feel wonderful right now your inner being understands the perfection of where you stand and when in any moment you feel the perfection of where you stand then all of that goes away for any of you who are new this is a really leading edge discussion of really fine-tuning deliberate creation this is someone who's understanding the launching of desire brought herself into vibrational alignment in the receptive mode many, many 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 times has received so many manifestations as a result of the alignment but now is wanting the hands in the clay moment by moment delicious experience of always being in a conscious deliberate creative mode that's what we're talking about here yeah. just to make the point mm -hmm. feel the difference between a focus wheel you know a focus wheel the difference between a focus wheel to shift yourself into a better place and a focus wheel to savor the place you're in that's what we are talking about here mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah that's it really good totally really good <laughs> I got it really good <laughs> yeah. yeah that was one of the best conversations this one that just happened absolutely love it and appreciate it I wanted to ask a bit about the physiological things that happen when someone comes in the hot seat and talks to you about something and then goes on with their life as we do because I've had some really joyful experiences with that and I understand that I create my own reality and I believe a lot in this participation with you and I value this time one-on-one -on -one with you one-on-one -on -one in my mind <laughs> obviously <laughs> and um, so yeah what happens with that physiologically why do I feel things later on is it because of that anchoring of this moment being powerful to me it's because of a shift it's because of a vibrational shift that you could not make if you were not ready for it mm -hmm. you said physiological and of course in your physical body everything feels physical but there is a vibrational basis to it mm -hmm. so it's the coming into a stronger point of clarity that lasts for a while it's coming into the frequency of your own inner being and when that happens everything shifts your point of attraction shifts and your conscious awareness of what the ramifications of that shift is keeps it going mm -hmm. a few years ago my first time in the hot seat I ran into Peter after I, I left the hot seat and he asked me I think a question he asks several other people of just what was your experience like for that first time and I said it felt like you had tasered me in a positive way like it feels like a jolt and it was really good and then my life immediately changed and then I feel like I milked it and milked it and milked it and I'm still doing that but also another time in the South Pacific you called on me early in the morning and I believe you referred to me and my happiness as slightly irrational which is the best compliment I've probably ever received so thanks for that <laughs> but for the remainder of the day I was I was in the front and I don't know if it's Abraham's hand or Esther's hand or whatever this hand is was sort of pointing in my direction and each time I physically felt this surge of energy that was well, incredible don't mistake the realness of this energetic world that we are all a part of our friend for a moment wanted to call it imaginary but it isn't this is real energy that you are both projecting and receiving this is the distinction that you're looking for we touched on it briefly already today but we want to bring it home to you in its fullness because this is exactly what you are wanting to identify and it's what you are almost ready to articulate yourself we talk about the non-physical you and the physical you and the relationship between the two and today we talked about your inner being standing in what we are calling your vortex in your vibrational point of attraction considering you fully and standing as the culmination of all 
that all that you have lived has brought you to be including the last dynamic moments that you've lived in this physical body mm -hmm. so everything that you've asked for your inner being stands in this vibrational non-place but state of being with law of attraction responding to that pure vibration and just for a moment contemplate what the momentum of that must be oh and now see yourself in your physical form in relationship to that having a moment where like in the first case that you talked about where you're more open to that than you have ever been so you receive a visceral feeling of the conscious experience of this jolt of a connection that's more powerful than you've ever allowed it before what you're talking about is the realization of the realness of this source energy that is you and its attention on you it's moment by moment where you are focused upon what you are focused upon so we're not talking about the jolt that we're sending you in this conversation and we're not talking about the summoning of all of this energy that your inner being stands as the receiver and the projector of what this conversation is about is you tuning your dial to receive it Ooh. yeah that's great yeah so maybe under these conditions it's easier for you to receive it it's easier for Esther to receive it under these conditions mm -hmm. these conditions are really conducive to alignment you see yeah 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 I have people ask me someone asked me last night actually you know well, what can you do what do you do to shift your vibration and as you've said we can do anything we want we can do anything that feels good to us for me this is easy button I just sign up and I come and I have an expectation if you're in this receptive mode you're down here in this receptive mode shifting your energy is not that easy even though we've written so many books and so many processes in order to help you to get into a little more receptive mode not a whole lot happens from that but when you accidentally or deliberately somehow stumble into the receptive mode in other words when you get out ahead of it when you first wake up in the morning and you realize you're there and you stay there just a little longer that's really how the shift takes place so if someone says how do you shift your vibration this is what we would say if we were in your physical shoes when I wake up I'm there and I try to hold it as long as I can and then what happens then I usually lose it but then I go to bed again and then what when I wake up I'm there and I try to hold it as long as I can then what happens I usually lose it then what happens I go to sleep and I wait in other words it really is every day starting anew every day finding it until you've recognized and after a while you'll realize that that comment from that person whoever it was you're headed off into the bar pit what are you gonna do about it Ooh. or you're gonna have a long conversation and go over the cliff and then need a new car and a new body <laughs> in order to continue so it really is about understanding about preferring alignment about maintaining it and about not freaking out when you lose it because you can get it back as soon as tomorrow morning when you wake up yeah can I clarify something that you said this morning when you were speaking to the gentleman about finances there was a comment about how something like when we're in step one having that contrast basically we're creating greater wanting from our inner being our inner being you said your inner being is becoming more prosperous yeah every time you ask for anything your inner being becomes it this is the part that we said that you'd never heard before in the sifting and sorting in your human form you're launching the rocket but you're not usually a match to it your inner being in its absence of resistance is always right up to speed with the latest and greatest that you've asked for so that's my question isn't my inner being the richest baddest most amazing inner being in the world isn't it already the most prosperous it could how can I make the in source more yes and that's why right now you get a jolt <laughs> jackpot that's why yes okay that's why all right and wouldn't it be nice if that was just a steady stream of knowing a steady stream mostly it is yeah just hooked to the taser all the time yeah. <laughs>